you're probably thinking four node JS licks, what is he talking about? But actually those four node licks are very important. They are the flexible building blocks that you put together as phrases in your solo. Think of a solo phrase as a sentence and these building blocks are the words. They are how you say something and you need great building blocks for great solos. And as you'll see, just naming it with an arpeggio or a scale is nowhere near enough. Let's first look at one that's like adding instant bebop to your solos. This is so simple, but it sounds fantastic in a line and it isn't just an arpeggio or a triad. You can at most call it a scale run with an inserted interval skip and that's also not much of a description. But if you use it on a minor seven chord, you get something like this. And it's equally great on a major seven chord. With the next one, you'll see an example where it's also pretty clear that just a chord name is not really a description. This is sort of an A minor triad with an added B. Or you can think of it as a C major seven shell voicing with an added A. It's great for alter dominance like this G7 alter. Or over an F sharp half diminished chord like this. And I think you'll agree that calling it an A minor triad or A minor at nine is not really describing it. An arpeggio is just a set of notes. So you can see how this isn't just an arpeggio or a scale. And that's what makes it great. You can think about these building blocks as being like words, as I mentioned at the beginning. It's not enough to have an analytical term for a set of notes like major seven arpeggio or diminished triad, because it's just as important what melody you make with those notes. Similar to what word you use in a sentence, there are options and they feel different even if they sort of mean the same thing. Motorized vehicle, car, the jazz mobile. Of course you want to know what notes to play, but you also need to have some idea on how you get them to sound great. And sometimes the arpeggio is enough, but often you want to be more creative with the melodies that you play. Ironically, the next two examples are both arpeggios and sound amazing. This arpeggio is not strictly a diatonic arpeggio in C major, even if the notes are all in the scale. It's an F major seven with a B instead of a C. The fact that I call it a major seven flat five arpeggio is also something that can get the comment section really fired up because some people will insist that it is in fact a sharp 11. Kill the monster! But an F major seven sharp 11 is a chord with six notes. F, A, C, E, G and B. And it seems a bit silly to call it an F major seven or mid five at sharp 11. Calling it F major seven flat five makes it very clear that this arpeggio only has four notes and especially that there's no C in there but a B, which is really important for how we use it. Now, of course, there's plenty of room in the comments. If you really get offended by this, just go right ahead. Can't be an angry this is a great sound for an alter dominant or a backdoor dominant, something like this. You can also use this as a voicing and there it sounds amazing as well. If you have F major seven here, then you create F major seven flat five by just moving down the fifth, so the C a half step, and then you have. And listen to this. The next one is pretty simple, but it's also great for really nailing a sound that we need quite often. As you can probably tell, this is a basic minor seven flat five arpeggio and I'm writing it out as an F major seven flat five because I want to show you how great it sounds on a G7 altered, really nailing the sound and also resolving very nicely. Just to give you a quick impression of how you can isolate some blocks, then look at this part of Pat Martino's solo on Just Friends, a solo that you anyway want to know. Now, of course, not everything is a neat four note phrase. So the first phrase is actually a one bar phrase, which is really focusing more on rhythm than on the note choice. Then we get a pickup followed by a scale melody, and then a D flat major Coltrane pattern, another scale melody, but this time with a 16 note turn, then some more descending scale, and then we get a B flat minor triad with an added C, kind of a different version of what I covered as the second example in this video. So that's how you can start to find things that you want to get into your own playing. Here's another bebop classic that you definitely want to know. There's a fair chance that you've heard me talk about this bebop phrase before. Playing a major seven arpeggio with octave displacement is a great sound for a lot of chords. And it is in so many bebop and harp up solos. Here it is on a minor seven chord. 
I'm sure you'll agree that this list would not really be complete without a chromatic enclosure. And this next one is one I lifted from a Michael Brecker solo. As I said, this is one that I picked up from Michael Brecker, but later I actually realized that he probably got it from Charlie Parker. It's like a standard enclosure, but with a leading note for the leading note. But it shouldn't all be tradition, you also want some more modern melodies. And the next one is one of my favorites, and also one that's a little bit underused, in my opinion. This quartal arpeggio with a tritone as the lowest interval really works great for a lot of things. Tonic minor, alto dominance, but also diminished scale sounds. I've written it out so that it's the top part of a G7 sharp 9, and you can use it in an altered line like this. But it also works really great with a diminished scale sound. When you start searching for blocks like this, then I think the best place to do that is probably in the music that really inspires you. So the solos that you think are amazing are also more likely to give you this material. This is also why I reference Pat Martino's solo on Just Friends. Now, learning solos and analyzing phrases is incredibly useful for this. And if you want to check out some of the phrases that I think are must-know bebop vocabulary, then check out this video. The other way to go about this is to mess around with material and try out things to see if you come across something that you like. That's also a lot of fun, but it can be very time consuming. 